Kia ora and welcome in to the inaugural episode of Kiwis Abroad on Sky Sport, where we take an in-depth look at the Kiwi athletes plying their trade overseas. Every week we'll have highlights, interviews and analysis from around the world. On today's show, the NBA preseason is back underway and that means Stephen Adams is familiarising himself with his new teammates at the New Orleans Pelicans following his trade there from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Is this the right move for him? How will he fit in down there and how will the Pelicans go in the NBA this season? Christian Clark covers the Pelicans for the New Orleans Advocate and will join me later on to discuss. But first... Yesterday, Minnesota United were knocked out of the MLS Cup playoffs uh, in heartbreaking fashion, going down 3-2 to the Seattle Sounders. It meant no trip to the final for All Whites, Michael Boxall, Noah Billingsley and James Musa. Here's how it happened. Ladero, outswinger, glanced on, Rui Diaz! As the clock ticks to 89, a rocket from Raul Rui Diaz levels up the score at Lumen Field. Ladero in swinger. Glenstein! Unbelievable! Svensson finds the corner in the fourth minute of added on time. And it's Seattle that go crazy, not the Loons. From two down to three to up. Brian Schmesser has done it again with his Sounders side who do not know when they've been in MLS Cup and surely they are through to the final once again. Michael Boxall joins me now on Kiwis Abroad from Minneapolis. Michael, thanks very much for your time. How are you pulling up after last night's heartbreaker? Um, yeah, obviously still still processing, going through through the emotion, all the emotions from last night. Uh, yeah, should have gone one better, but yeah, it's a tough way to end the season. Still, uh, I guess, a season to be proud of, though, making it to the conference final in, in a tough year for everyone? Yeah, I think so. I think I don't think too many people expected a whole lot of, out of us this year. And um, but I think within our group, we knew what we were capable of. And uh, just despite all the just disruptions that this year has, has really brought and the injuries that we've faced this year, I think, I think we can, can reflect upon the season positively. Yeah, last night, uh, you know, you guys were up 2-0 and, and, and things were looking pretty good. Um, they get a goal around 80 minutes uh, into the game and, and, and then another couple in stoppage time. What, what do you think um, happened in, the, in those last sort of 10, 15 minutes? Uh, I think with the way the, uh, the last week has gone for us, the, the turnaround and then the travel, um, just I think we have a few tired legs and down the stretch and we just, yeah, probably need some fresh legs on the field at that point in time, but... Yeah, we're kind of under the pump for the last 10, 15, and I wouldn't say I saw it coming, but I kind of backed ourselves to, to still dig us out of the hole, but it wasn't a be. Yeah, it did sort of seem like the momentum shifted when they scored that goal. Was it sort of hoping that, you know, once they'd even scored the equaliser, that you could get it to the end of the game, you know, get into a huddle, regroup, and then have a good go at them in extra time? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, there's no way once they equalise, I think, OK, you're kind of preparing for, for the extra time to take the penalties. And then, yeah, that dagger at the end just, uh, yeah, it's going to take a little bit to get over that one, but but life goes on. Yeah. Um, well, you know, more broadly speaking, um, a, a tough year, as I alluded to earlier, with, with all the disruptions and everything. But I, I think you're on the long list for a couple of awards this season. So are you happy with how your form's been this season? Uh, yeah, I think for the most part, yes. Uh, obviously, there's there are bits and pieces that, that I know I need to tidy up and I can still improve on, despite my age, I think. Um, um, yeah, obviously, finishing where we finished. And, keep making sure that he uh, sends the still danger. Still playing in the final this week, promising, but, and it's dangerous. Yeah, we're going to have another crack next year. But I think for the most part, it has, has been Sporting a big Kansas step in the right City direction. And, yeah, hopefully, hopefully everything gets under control next year and we have a, a bit more of a consistent season and hopefully some international football as well. It might be a bit raw at the moment, I guess, you know, coming out of a, a tough loss like that, but I, I guess that does add a bit of fuel to the fire to come back and hopefully go even better next season. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, as soon as the, as soon as I like kind of accepted the result last night and on the on the plane back, it's just, OK, figuring out the off-season plan, what, what the training is going to look like and, yeah, just how to bounce back from that. Um, yeah, because as, as I said before, it's it's not the way we want to go out, and especially when we think we've 
we didn't play particularly well, but we still got ourselves in a position to win the game last night. And yeah, to go out like that, yeah, you, you just want to get back on and, and have another crack. Um, you, you played in a team with a, a couple of other Kiwis this year as well, Noah Billingsley and, and James Moussa. Has it been nice having a, a few other New Zealanders around when, when you're so far away from home? Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, having having a familiar accent around is, is always good. And I think, I don't know, just that Kiwi mentality of, oh, you put in the work, you do, you grind away, you do everything you can, but then uh, just sort of laid back kind of off the field. It's just easy to relax and, and really enjoy yourself away away from the football when, when I don't know, things off the field aren't going great or when things or when results aren't going your way. It's good to have the, that sort of sort of familiar, familiarity around. And you, and you got one up over um, your national team teammate, Winston Reid, last week in the, in the semifinals. Um, <laughs> it's good to see him back on the field on playing regularly. Did you get a chance to, to catch up to, with him and, and, and how he's found um, this season in the MLS? Yeah, I managed to catch up with, with him a few times and... Uh, yeah, obviously he's enjoying himself. I think the situation with him and his, his family made it a bit difficult for him to, to truly settle in. But no, nah, so for him to, to really get a consistent run of games. Um, yeah, hopefully getting back to full fitness. And no, nah, he, he was looking pretty good and popped up and scored a few few big goals for them too. So yeah, I mean, who knows what the what next year holds for him, but I'm just happy that he got a good, good run of games. Yeah. Hey, so you know, Kiwi viewers back home in New Zealand will be watching this um, from a COVID-free paradise at the moment. But but for you and I in America, it's a bit of a different story at the moment. So, can you sort of explain what the the precautions that the MLS takes around um, coronavirus and how many times you guys are tested and yeah. and what it's like sort of playing w within the MLS bubble? Um, obviously, we have the, yeah. In the middle of the season, we had that big MLS this back tournament where the whole league mm -hmm. down to Orlando uh, stayed in one big resort at Disney and we're just playing the games at one location. Um, so that was a, a really peculiar situation, I think. Yeah, five, six weeks away from the family. It's it's not ideal. Obviously, we were just happy to get back on the field and doing what we love again. Um, and then as thing as we moved back to back to our home markets and the season kind of got back to normal, it was yeah, testing every single day. Um, I'm not every single day, every other day. And then the day before games, and then chartering. Usually we go the, a day before the game or two days before the games, but it's, yeah, chartering the day of the game, um, straight straight on the bus to the hotel, quick pre-match meal, straight to the stadium, play the game, stadium back to the airport, land back in Minnesota, get tested again, and then back home at like 2, 3 in the morning. So it's um, it's nice. How many nose swabs do you think you've had this year? Well over 100. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Every, wow. every second day since I think back in May and then because we've, we've had a few positive cases within our team yeah. um, so whenever that occurs you get I think we get tested every day for two weeks and then at the, for the first three or four days it's, it's two tests a day so yeah it's, it's pretty stringent but obviously make every precaution you can to, to slow the spread yeah, I imagine it's particularly tough for you when you've got a young family as well um, up, up in Minnesota, um, you know, going through all of this and spending a lot of time away from home during a difficult time. Yeah, um, I mean, at the beginning, it was it was a little bit tough when like my daughter's school closed down. So it was, I don't know, minus five degrees outside and you're trying to entertain her in your apartment and, and, and also just keep each other sane. And it's, it's not the easiest thing to do that. But then obviously, yeah. Um, was able to put on some perspective on things and um, yeah, able to spend spend a lot of time with, with my wife and daughter and then just have my son, what, he's almost three months now. Um, so yeah, just to be more more present in, in the early stages when he's around, that's been, I've been fortunate for that. So yeah, a little, definitely some silver lining in, in, in 2020 for sure. And, and are you getting back to New Zealand now for the off season? Are you, are you going through the quarantine process and, and hopefully getting back to New Zealand? Yeah, that's the plan. I think I think we'll fly back in a week or two. Uh, yeah, and yeah, just looking to get out and see. live a live a normal life for a little. Bit. Yeah, exactly. Just be spoiled and see what what a normal life is like again. Because uh, yeah, it, it seems seems like so so long ago that I was able to or a restaurant or. Yeah, I don't even, I can't even remember what a bar looks like anymore. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. 
Um, and, and just looking ahead to next year, obviously the, the national team is something we'd, you know, we'd love to see the All Whites back in action again. We had those friendlies announced against England and Belgium yeah. that, that unfortunately fell through. Those would have been uh, tremendous matches to be seen played. But um, have you had conversations with Danny Hay about what 2021 looks like um, at this early stage? Yeah, we've been in fairly regular contact. Uh, obviously, he's, he's watching every game that any All Whites plays that he can. Uh, so yeah, for the last few weeks, been speaking to him every week, and I think we've got a, a big catch-up Zoom call with the whole team next week, just to to really get around what next year is going to look like. Um, yeah, because I think was it the game in Dublin just over a year ago? I think that that kind of showed me the potential of, especially with these young coming up. I think that was so exciting to watch when I really had no idea what to expect from from all these young young players and. I think they're, all of them have kind of kicked on with their, their careers and will, will only have improved. And yeah, so I'm excited to get back with them and yeah, play some play some international football before I get too old. For sure. And, and I mean, the World Cup's not not far off now in 2022. And and when you look at this, you know, the talented group of players that New Zealand's got on offer, on offer it must be pretty exciting to uh, hopefully play plenty of matches in the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's the most important thing for us. We need to get all our, all our best players on the pitch. Um, obviously, you've got Woodsy, Ryan, Thomas playing at such a high level and you'd like to get them involved in and around around the young kids who have just started their, their early careers over in Europe as well. Um, and obviously, you've got all the Kiwis back in Australia and New Zealand who, who are starting the season pretty soon, I think. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, that news, that always environment, it's always so fun for me to get back into. It's it's uh, something on the calendar that I always look forward to. So, yeah, hopefully hopefully we get that resuming next year. All right, Michael Boxall joining us there from Minneapolis. Yeah, tough break for Minnesota United this year going down in that Western Conference final last night. A thrilling game it was, but the Minnesota United team will all be back next year. They've got a young, exciting team, uh, and they'll be eager for a crack at the big dance in 2021. Speaking of young teams, the New Orleans Pelicans are certainly that uh, going into this year's NBA season, headlined by one of the NBA's brightest young stars, Zion Williamson, and now with a Kiwi in their ranks after Stephen Adams was traded there from the Oklahoma City Thunder a few weeks ago. Uh, he immediately signed a, a two-year extension as well, worth just under 50 million New Zealand dollars. Not bad for Stephen Adams. Here's what he had to say about joining the Pelicans. It's all part of the business, you know what I mean? Getting traded in there. And that, ain't the, that isn't really the difficult part. Uh, the difficult part is the uh, relationships that you build within it, and then you're just, uh, then you have to move on. But, it's, mate, it's not like I died or anything, you know? Like, I'm going I'm to see them again. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, it, ain't, it ain't that sad. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good time in uh, OKC. But uh, in terms of just coming here, man, it's just like an exciting, exciting team. Um, Stan's an old school dude. I mean, old school guy. And I just like that, man. You know what I mean? So I feel like I could learn, learn a lot from him. Um, yeah, hence the extensionis. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell, mate. His potential's definitely up there. I mean, he's an amazing athlete, uh, amazing player. Um, yeah, and he's built. <laughs> he's just built like a prick. Yeah, you know the rest. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, it's it's got to be good, man. Uh, but it, it, again, it isn't not to take anything away from him or whatever. It's, it's more about like uh, fitting into the team and how you work together with all of them. Like it isn't just Zion, if that makes sense, right? It, it isn't just two players. It, there's the guards and there's your know, wings and then how they play defense, how they move, what do they look for. There's all those that come into it. It's not yeah, it's not so much that if that makes sense. It's more how am I going to just the best I can get that team chemistry going uh, with, uh, with them if possible? Um, yeah, and again, just trying to just help them in whatever way I can. Well, Christian Clark covers the Pelicans for the New Orleans Advocate and NOLA.com, and he joins me now to discuss the trade of Stephen Adams. Christian, thanks very much for your time. What's been the feeling in New Orleans after the acquisition of the Big Kiwi? Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I think the Pelicans are kind of this wild card team. I mean, I think a lot of media and fans expected them, if they were going to spend a lot of money on a center, to go out and get a center 
you know, who could really complement Zion Williamson on the offensive end, who would be able to step behind the three-point line and shoot threes. Um, that's not what they did. They really placed a big bet on kind of playing this bully ball, bruising style. And I'm really curious to see how it looks. Um, I mean, I think obviously, you know, Stephen Adams has talked to the media here twice and people already love him as a person. I mean, he just kind of has a magnetism to him. Um, he's just has a lot of charisma. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how him and Zion kind of mesh this year. Yeah. I, I wonder if, 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 you know, having a guy like Stephen Adams where he's well liked, he's a, he's a positive dressing room influence with a, um, having a guy like that in a young team, which is going to be getting a lot of national exposure with Zion Williamson on the team, so a lot of pressure comes with that. Having someone like Stephen Adams in that locker room will, will be quite beneficial to this team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, David Griffin, the Pelicans' executive vice president, said that you know they brought in Stephen Adams and signed him to that two-year extension. You know, even almost more so for the person and the leader that he is than what he's able to contribute on the basketball court, which you know, not to poo poo that at all. Like it's, it's a lot, like he's a really good player, but they, you know, they have a lot of young guys on this roster. They got a lot of picks coming down the pipeline. They feel like, you know, they need players in here who are going to teach their young guys, like here are the habits you have to form if you want a long successful career in the NBA. And I think clearly Steven Adams is, is one of those guys who's done it the right way in his career. And, and clearly a big vote of confidence in them signing him to a, two-year, $35 million extension, um, guaranteeing him in, in New Orleans for three years beyond the season he's got. It's a, it's a big vote of confidence. Were you surprised to see that that by either party? Yeah, I, I was, to be honest. I mean, it's a big commitment to make, um, you know, having not seen how Stephen fits next to your core two players, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson at all. I mean, I think, you know, that is a pretty significant investment. Um, you know, it it was a little bit surprising. Um, and, you know, like I said, I just think it's going to be interesting. I mean, they, they really have no choice but to kind of embrace this rugged identity over the next three years. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, on the court, you know, we, we, we briefly touched on it, but how do, how do you think, um, how do you see Stephen Adams' role um, being on the court for the Pelicans? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the Pelicans are betting that they'll be able to improve on the defensive end almost immediately. Um, they were they finished last season ranked 21st in defense. Um, I think they viewed that as highly disappointing. Uh, bringing in Stan Van Gundy, a guy who in his 11 full seasons as a coach, has coached eight top 10 defenses. They're expecting, you know, a turnaround pretty quickly. Um, Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams are two guys who are, you know, proven defenders in the NBA. Um, and I think, you know, the other three guys in the starting lineup, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Zion Williamson, um, you know, they're they're betting that that Stan can kind of mold that into like a pretty solid unit right away. Um, so like I, I mean I just I just know what to expect from Steven Adams. I mean I think he's just, you know, one of the more consistent players in the NBA. You just know what you're getting from him in a night in and night out basis. And um you know, like the Pelicans aren't at this point in their life cycle where they're trying to compete for championships. Like th this is a franchise that just wants to get to the playoffs right now. And I think clearly you know, Steven Adams is a guy who can help you do that. Yeah, for sure. H have you had a chance to speak to the other players? Obviously, it's early doors and in preseason for, for the upcoming season. But have you had a chance to speak to them about um, training with Steven Adams so far? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they've only had two team practices. Um, this The whole timeline over here is just kind of weird because of the pandemic. So you haven't got a great feel for it just because it, <laughs> there's such a limited amount of time on the court. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Steven Adams is a guy who's been well liked and, you know, anyone who's interacted with him really. So I don't, I don't worry about that at all. I mean, I just worry about like, you know, can this team learn a new system, um, you know, before the season opener on December 22nd? Like, they're going to have s only seven or eight practices before their first preseason game. I mean, there's just such a limited time frame to, to absorb all of this new information. Yeah, I guess having, having a, a big name coach like Stan Van Gundy will help that. Yeah, I think it could. I mean, I, I think it was, it was interesting yesterday. He gave, I thought it was a pretty good analogy. He said, you know, kind of working with a new team, it's like building a new house. Like I could get the house up quicker, 
but we're not going to do that. Like we're going to take the time to lay the foundation properly. You know, we're, we're going to put up all the wooding and the siding and all that. Like it, he basically warned that it could take some time. Like, you know, probably don't judge this team 10 games in and like be sounded the alarm bell, like maybe wait till the 30 game mark or something. Um, so I, I do just think it's going to take some time. I mean, he's very meticulous, detail oriented. Like he wants things done the way he wants them done. Yeah, for sure. So, so with that in mind, what, what, what do you sort of see as the expectations for this Pelicans team for this season? Is there a path to the playoffs for them? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, as long as Zion is able to stay healthy this year and they don't get rocked by this virus, which unfortunately is still kind of raging out of control over here that, you know, if they're not a team that at least finishes in that seven to 10 range, a team that's involved in the play in tournament, which is new, then to me, it would be viewed as a disappointment. Um, I mean, I think that's very reasonable. Um, I mean, there's, there's some talent on this roster and, you know, when Zion was healthy last year, like they were, they were difficult to deal with. Like they were not a fun team to play. So I don't see any reason why they shouldn't finish in that seven to ten range. Is there a bit of a buzz around New Orleans about this side? Obviously, they've had, you know, stars in the past. The most recent being Anthony Davis, um, you know, who who was since traded to the Lakers. But um, is there a bit of a buzz about this side with with, with one of the biggest up and coming stars in the team and and a side that's really trending upwards? Yeah, I think there's um, a little bit of buzz locally. Um, I think, honestly, some people still have a bad taste in their mouth from the way last season ended. It was, I think there's a little bit of a sense of, well, you guys reeled me in a little bit with the Zion stuff. And, like, we saw it for 20 games, but that was all we saw. And then you guys fell completely flat on your faces at the first sign of meaningful games. Um, you know, I think the hardcores understand that, you know, the team – really wanted to address those issues. I mean, they changed the coaching staff. You know, the, the whole offseason is about becoming a tougher basketball team, I think. Um, so I think there is a little bit of buzz. Uh, but I think, honestly, for, like, you know, widespread, like, interest here, they're just going to have to see it a little bit. Like, they're just going to have to win first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, just just more generally about the NBA, what, what are we expecting from, from the league this year? Obviously, after since the pandemic, they went into the bubble, and and that seemed to work quite well. Um, you know, earlier this year. But are we, are we expecting to see fans back at any point in Louisiana? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I asked that question last month to kind of our some of our city officials and uh, higher ups in the Pelicans organization, and the answer then was yes, a very limited amount of fans in the stands. Um, you know, inf infection rates have kind of gone up here locally. So I don't know that the answer is the same. They haven't said anything officially in more than a month. Um, so it, it's just going to depend on what infection rates look like, you know, towards the end of this month, uh, I, I think is the main thing. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Christian, thanks very much for coming on. Really appreciate it, mate. Um, you know, enjoy watching the NBA this season and hopefully the Pelicans uh, have a strong season. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Christian Clark, thanks very much for your time, mate, and thanks for coming on Kiwis Abroad. All right, well, this NBA season is certainly shaping up to be an exciting one, isn't it? And uh, the Pelican side uh, will definitely be one to watch. An exciting team with Zion and now Stephen Adams in their ranks. Another interesting side to watch, though, will be uh, my hometown team here in New York, the Brooklyn Nets. Um, Sean Marks, the former tallback, is, of course, their general manager, and they're expected to go deep this year. Kevin Durant, one of the NBA's biggest stars, is back from injury. Um, you know, all the reports are saying that they're looking fantastic in training camp early. So, so they'll be expected to go deep. Um, so the Nets and Pelicans, two exciting teams for Kiwis to keep an eye on in the NBA this season. All right, that wraps up this episode of Kiwis Abroad. Thanks very much for watching. Keep an eye out, though, for Lydia Ko uh, in action in the U.S. Women's Golf Open. That starts Friday 4.30 a.m. on Sky Sport 6. Keep an eye out on that. I'll be back Sunday with another episode of Kiwis Abroad. Until then, stay healthy and take care.